aloha. My name is Noah Naipo. I am the associate pastor of Children's Ministry for Evergreen Christian Community in Olympia, Washington. Uh, I have been in children's ministry for four years. Uh, a little history about me is that I didn't uh, grow up in a home that actually went to church when I was a kid, so I came to know the Lord into my mid-twenties, and so I had a lot of my life, a lot of time to make a lot of mistakes before uh, God embraced me. Um, something unique about my employment at ECC is that Evergreen is my home church. It is the only church that I know. It's where I found the Lord. It's where I was baptized. It's where I dedicated my kids, uh, our lead pastors who married us. Uh, and uh, it's just been an amazing opportunity for me to be able to serve and be employed at the church uh, that I've, I've grown up in, basically. Um, I've been attending fusion events uh, since I felt my call to ministry for the last six years, and um, I am just honored at my opportunity to come to speak to leaders and pastors that feel called to speak life, love, and encouragement uh, into future generations. And so um, this session is called Preaching to Kids, all right? And we're going to be talking about practical ways uh, of things to consider and, and ways to look at preparing messages to preach to kids, all right? And so I'm a lover of acronyms, and so appropriately, our acronym for today is the word SAY. You know, what do we do with words? We say them. So each letter of our, our letter, or each, I'm sorry, each letter of our word SAY will be one of our main points through our discussion today. So the first letter is S, which will stand for speak to your audience. And that's obvious. You've got to speak to the people uh, that are gathered to hear you talk. But it, it's uh, actually uh, deeper. Uh, there's a deeper meaning beyond just talking to the group of people assembled to hear you, right? Uh, speaking to the audience uh, is a way to dive deeper into the who we are speaking to and just remembering some key components of uh, formulating and drafting and uh, eventually uh, executing a message to preach to kids. Uh, the second letter, A, stands for avoid cut and paste. So most of us aren't born with the ability to uh, think up and formulate and actually write our own messages week after week after week after week. So most children's pastors choose to purchase a curriculum. And so this is just a way to navigate through implementing a curriculum and uh, some dangers to avoid uh, of your reliance on someone else's preparations to preach to kids. The last letter of our acronym is Y, and that stands for Yearn to Learn. And the simple premise behind this is that uh, when you're thinking about how we speak to kids, you have to know as a person called to and commissioned to speak to children, you have a high mantle to uphold and you have a big responsibility on your, on your hands and in your heart, you feel called to do this. And so you and who you are, uh, what you have to offer is very, very important for you to consider before you preach to kids. So let's jump right in. And I am looking forward to uh, digging in a little bit deeper into preaching to kids. All right. Our first letter, S, speak to kids. Uh, the main idea behind speaking to your audience uh, is just like it sounds, right? The principles of this are basic, and anyone that speaks to any group of people, but especially kids, needs to remember this. And the, the big idea is you need to know your audience. So here are two very practical things to think about and consider when you are preparing a message to preach to kids, all right? So number one, age group. Okay, knowing how old your audience is, all right, is uh, the best way to decide what you speak and how you speak to your group. So in essence, a second grader is not going to be able to understand as deep theological concepts as a maybe a fourth or fifth grader. Uh, just in the same way, a preschooler may not be able to understand the theological concepts of salvation, sanctification, and even the words grace. So you have to formulate your message, how you preach to kids, based on the age of which you're speaking to. And knowing that is key, okay? So let's take, for example, the Good Samaritan, found in Luke 10, Matthew 22, or Mark 12. 
okay? Teaching to a group of two years old to five year olds, okay? You would want to stick to the basics of this parable because the comprehension of those age ranges is much more limited. So when I say basics, I would mean concepts like kindness and loving others, okay? Now, if you move up to maybe a seven to nine-year-old group, okay, that would be roughly between first and third grade, you can start to dig deeper into some of the concepts of the Good Samaritan, things like what does Jesus mean by neighbor, the concept of neighbor, right? Going beyond just the people that live next to us, okay? Or maybe something else like, what is a parable? Discussing that with a first through third grade is much easier than someone in preschool. Maybe even, why did Jesus even speak in parables, okay? Things like that. Lastly, our fourth and fifth grade, or maybe 10, 11, and 12-year-old age range, uh, you could go into a much deeper discussion uh, because of their comprehension about the Good Samaritan, uh, touching on subjects like, why did Jesus choose the priest, the temple assistant, and a person from Samaria for the characters in the parable? Okay? So maybe even something else like, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Again, that was the original question that started Jesus talking about this specific parable. So you can go into a much deeper theological discussion with those. So when you're formulating your, your preaching and teaching for kids, make sure that you know the age range. Number two, learning styles. Okay? A basic understanding of the different way uh, people, especially kids, process and take in information is key to formulating how you preach to kids. So these are some basic things that you just need to know, and, and I know a lot of us already probably know these, but remembering them when we're formulating and drafting and executing our messages to preach to kids is so important. So let's just take a look at a few of them. Number one, auditory learners. These are the people that need to hear. They need someone to speak to them. They need a video that has something that will catch their attention that they can hear. The best way they soak in information is to listen to it. Now, unfortunately, as children's pastors, I think we do too much focus in this area. We actually do a really good job of teaching to auditory learners. All right, but let's take a look at a couple of others, okay? Number two, Visual learners. Now, this is a group that needs to be stimulated by what they see. They need a video that is engaging. They need props. They need uh, object lessons. They need something that they can watch and they will learn just so well by just seeing something happen. Now, again, this is an area that I think we do very well in, but I think we could also do better by little things. So here's something I would recommend for you, a practical thing you could do. I do what's called a mystery bag. This is something I've uh, picked up from uh, my years of, of learning children's ministry. But a mystery bag is simply a bag that you put a random item in and you think up clues to have your audience guess what is in the bag? Now, the item that you choose is supposed to be something that will draw their attention to some part of the Bible story. Now, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to explain the story, but it should be something that they can get their mind processing and thinking about the story. So, for the Good Samaritan, we'll use that, that story again. For the Good Samaritan, you might use a stuffed animal as a donkey. You know, as, as the, the animal that the guy picks up the, 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 per, the beaten person on. You might use uh, some coins saying how the good Samaritan uh, had his hotel stay uh, paid for and, and everything that he needed to get healthy paid for with the money. You might use something like even a clock that you can talk about the, the deeper discussion of eternal life or extended time. All right, so there's just something practical that you can use for visual learners. Lastly, we have group number three is our kinesthetic learners. Okay, these are the ones that don't normally like to sit still during your, uh, your preaching and your teaching. Okay, these are the ones that are stimulated by movement. These are the ones that, that love to participate, to help, to get up on stage and be hands-on with interacting with the information that you are preaching or teaching. Okay, 
So again, uh, when, when you're preaching to this group, it's important to remember the need of movement. So every once in a while, throw in a hand motion. I always like to do some small things. So here's, here's a little thing you could do. I always like to, when something's getting really dramatic in the Bible story, you tell the audience, everybody say, <gasps> even something like that, a physical exertion that they have to make in the crowd resets their mind and that fix for that need for movement. Or even something like, everybody say, hmm. Like when you want them to think about something, you say something and they, you want them to contemplate it a little bit. So have the entire audience scratch their chin and kind of go, hmm, that gives them that little fix of like, man, I did a movement and that gets me thinking about the information that I'm hearing. So anyways, age groups and learning styles are two major variables you have to consider when preaching to kids, but you can't uh, neglect other things. So uh, here's a couple of others, saved or not saved. Is your audience primarily kids that already go to church, or are they a group of kids that maybe don't necessarily go? That can be important in teaching kids, all right? Uh, and lastly, what's the community? Are you in a low-income area? Are you in a high-wealth area? Are you uh, in a rural county, or are you in the inner city? Those types of things are important about knowing your audience so that you can speak to your audience. Point number two. A stands for avoid cut and paste, okay? So simply, it means exactly what it sounds like. You know how to cut and paste. You choose what you want. You cut it from whatever uh, uh, program or, or document you have it from, and you paste it to where you need to, okay? I want to talk to you about choosing curriculum. All of us as children's pastors have been called and anointed to preach the gospel. Now, a lot of us, again, don't have it in us to develop our own teachings week after week after week. And so we choose a curriculum. Now, I am by no means downplaying or, or, or anything, uh, any use of curriculum. I actually highly recommend if you don't have the capacity to create a good teaching every week, or if maybe you're bivocational and maybe you're preparing messages for multiple age groups, I highly recommend choosing and, and navigating the use of a curriculum, okay? What I do want to encourage you is to not fall into the trap of the curriculum choosing for you what you put in your services and your gatherings, okay? My simple thought for you today is that I want you to remember when you process what curriculum you're going to use, I, I, my hope is that you prayerfully have considered it, you've vetted it, that you've tried to align it with the vision of your church, if not your ministry. And so I, in my heart, am hoping that the curriculum that you have wasn't because, well, this is what we could afford, or, well, this is what the person before me used, so I, that's just what I'm going to use, okay? We serve an amazing God that deserves better than that. He has anointed you to speak and to preach to children, which, as we all know, Jesus held in very high esteem. So my encouragement to you is to be careful not to use a curriculum to drive your ministry, okay? In essence, if your curriculum says it, it provides you with A, B, and C, your service or your gathering does not just need to have A, B, and C. When you look at it, if your component C doesn't align with the vision of your ministry, then either remove it from your gathering or morph it and change it to be yours. Simply put, don't let the system drive your ministry. Use the system within your ministry, okay? Again, don't let the system or the curriculum drive your ministry. Use the system within your ministry. What do I mean by that? Something simple that you can do to kind of safeguard yourself from letting a curriculum take over and really drive what you do every single day, you just cutting and pasting it into your flow and your gathering flows or your service flows, is to have a outline. This outline will basically be something that you fill out no matter where you're preaching, 
whether it be for a Sunday morning gathering, a midweek program, maybe you got invited to speak at camp, maybe you got invited to speak at a conference, but this outline is yours and yours alone. So let me give you kind of a practical one uh, that I've inherited uh, from an amazing mentor of mine. Uh, number one starts with a big idea. Your big idea is five to six short words that can be memorized easily by kids to remember what you talked about, okay? Number two, your Bible story. What specific Bible story are you gonna teach about, okay? Number three, key verse. What is the verse that you want kids to think about and consider after they've heard you teach, okay? Number four, illustration and props. Are you gonna have some kind of visual, uh, visual item up there for kids who are visual learners to see? Maybe it's a prop or an illustration that you can actually get a kinesthetic learner to come up and manipulate on stage so they can get that fix of learning with their hands, okay? So having that as part of your outline. And lastly, response or life application. What is it you want the kids to get out of what you're about to say? Very basic, it's a simple outline, but this is something that you can hold dear and you can say, this is mine, and it doesn't matter what kind of curriculum, whatever, whatever kind of information I'm pulling from, from wherever, I'm gonna fit it into my outline. That way it is you, the person who has been called and commissioned to preach to kids, preparing the message for kids. The main point is to take seriously our ministry. Okay? Take serious the mantle that you've been granted, the privilege to speak and preach to kids. Uh, they deserve your best, not the curriculum's best. Point number three. Our last point today is the letter Y from our acronym SAY, right? S was speak to your audience. A was avoid cut and paste. And Y is yearn to learn. I want to start off by reading the scripture from Acts 20. Verse 28, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Now again, as someone called to and commissioned to preach to kids, we have to remember that who we are and what we have to offer kids is key if you looked closely at that, being a shepherd is our business. We are granted the privilege to preach and speak to kids. But the first part of that scripture was to guard yourself. The New King's James Version says to heed yourself. Okay, New Living Translation again says guard yourself. The first thing he says before it goes into tending to your flock is yourself meaning in a deeper way that your spiritual disciplines and what you have to offer to those kids is paramount. So here's what I want to offer to you as a practical thing. Remember this, operate, preach, and teach from an overflow, not a direct pour. This is something that uh, has been taught to me by one of my mentors again, and I'm not sure if he got it from somewhere else or if uh, it's something he learned, um, but it is something he's passed on to me and has been groundbreaking for me. So imagine yourself as a glass, and as you pray and as you read your Bible, God fills you, and as a person called to preach to kids, you pour yourself out to your congregation, to your flock. You are shepherding them by sharing with them the word of God. If you only fill yourself only to pour yourself out onto your flock, then you are directly pouring from God. And what does that mean? That means that at times there are going to be intervals of time when you will sit empty. And so my encouragement to you in this premise is to operate, preach, and teach from an overflow. Change your mindset that when you read and when you, when you pray to God, when you fast, when you are working on your spiritual disciplines, that you are working on being filled, but the only thing that you offer, the only thing you preach and teach from is what overflows from God to those around you. That way, there was never a time when you are sitting empty, okay? So 
easily enough, you can ask yourself, you know, some questions to know whether or not, am I doing, you know, the direct pour or am I, am I actually operating from an overflow? Well, here's some easy questions, okay? Statistics say that on an average, preachers spend 15 minutes of day, each day in prayer. We obviously know that's not enough. Where are you on that scale? Okay, number two, ask yourself this. When was the last time you read your Bible and it had nothing to do with curriculum or a message prep? Something to think about, okay? Number three, when was the last time you actually meditated on a devotional thought instead of just checking it off for the day? There's, I love the Bible app. I love the different devotionals that they have. But there are times where I just want to check it off for the day. So I go through it and I go through the motions. But when was the last time you actually sat and meditated and truly sought for God to fill you? All right? Four, we got two more. When was the last time that you fasted? When was the last time you truly dedicated some time to fasting something and truly seeking God? And lastly, when was the last time you felt truly fulfilled in your calling after preaching to kids, okay? Now, these aren't the only questions that you can use to figure out whether you're in overflow versus direct, uh, direct pour, uh, but the, the simple fact is that your devotion to your spiritual disciplines has to be paramount when preaching to kids because you are called to take care of yourself, but just as importantly, to be a good shepherd to the flock that God has entrusted you with, all right? So I want to, in closing, uh, go over one more scripture. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 2 says, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. No matter what season we're in, no matter where we are, God is willing to pour into us. But we have to be diligent as pastors, as leaders, as coordinators, to be filled and not just directly pour ourselves out because that is just not sustainable. And so when you're considering preaching to kids, remember, be a person of substance by remembering, yearn to learn. Consider to grow in your knowledge and your wisdom of God, not just to prepare for your next time teaching, but preach to kids out of an overflow of God's love, grace, and his mercy for you. Maybe you heard what I had to say and nothing really resonated with you. My prayer for you is that this was just an affirmation of something you're already doing. You're already considering speaking to your audience, knowing your audience, who it is you're speaking to. You know about the age groups. You ask about uh, the learning styles and you, and you ask about you know, the, the community that you're going into. You, you already know those things and that is so great. Again, I just pray that this is an affirmation for you. Maybe you already know about avoiding cut and paste, knowing the danger dangers of relying too much on a curriculum. And so again, I just praise you for, for God anointing you with the power to, to navigate that correctly. And lastly, of course, maybe you're somebody that you are just set in your ways of your spiritual disciplines and you thrive in operating by preaching and teaching out of the overflow. I am thankful for you, but I would encourage you to say that uh, you are few and far between. I think most of us don't operate as well as we should, especially when it comes to yearning to learn, all right? The second group, maybe there uh, was one thing that deeply convicted you in your heart. So today, I wanna encourage you to seek counsel. Find a mentor. At ECC, we have this, uh, this way of finding a ministry lead and a ministry mentor. I would in encourage you to find a ministry mentor. This is someone that's not a direct report. This is someone that comes alongside you and talks about life outside of ministry. Obviously, these things that we're talking about, preaching to kids, has to do with ministry, but it helps you to, uh, to talk to someone that isn't in your ministry uh, when you're talking about possibly the woes of or, or ways that you feel like you need to grow in your ministry. So so find a ministry mentor, and that would be my prayer for you today. Maybe you're part of the third group, and maybe two of the big points, or maybe even all three, have just cut you deeply, and you just feel like a failure. That by no means is my intent. I just want to encourage you. The last thing I want to do for us today is, is pray, because 
everything that we talked about today are basic principles and they're things that are just need to be that we just need to consider uh, when we're preaching to kids. They're important, but they are by no means something that you should feel judged by or that you should uh, gauge your success on. All right. So I want to just pray for you um, as children's ministers. I think we sometimes fall into the trap of uh, gauging our success on the numbers. And so I want you to know, no matter what size of church you're in, no matter what city you're from, that God has anointed you to be exactly where you are, and he is the one who brings the kids to your door. All right, And it's not about you. It's not about uh, your, your choice of curriculum. It is simply about him offering you a flock to shepherd. And so I want to pray for you guys before uh, you head out today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this amazing opportunity to learn more more about preaching to kids. God, I ask for everyone that is watching this video to feel an amazing awareness of your presence in their life, God, that they would seek after you, that they would yearn to learn, that their spiritual disciplines would be fortified, that the enemy would be uh, just swatted aside when he tries to come against and discourage us uh, from doing these simple things that draw us closer and closer to you, Lord. As we pray, as we read God's word, as we, as we uh, fast, as we do these these, these things that we are, are, are disciplined to do, not as a checklist, but truly as a way of drawing closer to you. May our efforts and energies be multiplied and be honored and blessed by you, by your Holy Spirit, to go forth and to preach to kids. Lord, I ask for an extra portion of blessing upon those that are fighting discouragement, that may be wrestling with doubt about their call to this ministry because they may, they may feel like they're not doing well. But Lord, I just know that you have something greater in mind for them. Uh, may you undergird them with uh, a hedge of protection mentally and spiritually. May you physically bring godly people into their life to speak life, love, and encouragement into them so that they can speak life, love, and encouragement into kids. So Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to preach to kids, and we just ask that we would do it to the best of our abilities. In Jesus' name, amen.